New H-1B rule are changing the playing field. What does it mean for employers and employees? I'll tell you about this in this video. Hello everybody and welcome back to Immigration Channel. This is where we explain complex immigration matters in short, simple videos. We make immigration easy. And in this video, we'll talk about the new changes in the H-1B lottery system, how this new landscape in the H-1B visa lottery system changed how people apply for this, and essentially we have a drop of over 40% in applications this year. What exactly has changed in the H-1B visa system and how it's gonna impact employers and employees in the future years. I'll go over all this in this video, and this is important for you if you're applying for a job in the United States or if you're an employer looking to hire foreign workers in the next few years. Before we do that, if you're here for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos, and also give us a big like so YouTube will be able to show this video to more people just like you. As always, if you need help with your immigration matters, with your H-1B, with all kind of green card process for employment, all you have to do is send me a text, 619-483-4549 or go to www.immigrationasap.com leave your details there and one of our team members will contact you ASAP. And now let's jump into the video. So as you know the H-1B process has changed dramatically in the past year and you know that the H-1B visa which is the most common work visa whereby employers hire skilled workers, those workers that hold at least a bachelor degree and the position requires a bachelor degree as well. That visa is called H-1B. Because we only have 65,000 visas plus 20,000 extra that is reserved for those students that graduated from U.S. institutions with a master degree, essentially you have 85,000 visas available and we have over 400,000 applicants that apply for the H-1B visa every year. And in previous years, we've seen as many as 700,000 applicants applying for the H-1B visa lottery. But this year, applications have been reduced by about 40%. And this is the first time this has happened. And the reason why it's happened is because of the major changes that the government took last year to prevent fraud and abuse in the H-1B visa system. So let's talk about what are these changes. The big change that was essential is that under the new rules, the lottery is now limited to only one applicant. And what I mean by one applicant is this one human applicant. And they're going to be verifying it by using their documents like passport, and IDs. And this is different from previous years because previous years, if you were one applicant but you had multiple job offers, you could apply for the green card lottery using these multiple job offers because it depended on how many employers were actually filing for you and not on the number of applicants applying for the H-1B. That created obviously too many applications, fraud and abuse in the system because some applicants essentially used fake jobs and multiple job offers that never existed. As I mentioned before, two years ago, they had up to 750,000 applications for the H-1B lottery competing for only 85,000 visas. This is ridiculous. And of course, they realized how much abuse was in that system. As a result, with these changes, you can see we've seen over a 40% drop in how many applications were submitted for the lottery this year. Again, the main purpose of this change is to prevent companies from flooding the system with duplicate applications. So as a result of these big changes, we've seen 88 decrease in duplicate applications as opposed to previous years. Another reason why we've seen less applications this year is because of the mass layoffs in the tech sector. Many companies like Meta, Google, Amazon, and Tesla experience severe layoffs, and most of these companies actually hire and fire H-1B employees. System. Overall, the system is now more streamlined. Applicants can create accounts online, both for the employer and for the employee. And it looks like that in the next few years, we're gonna see more or less a stabilization of the amount of applicants that are applying for H-1B work visas. This year, USCIS received only 740,000 H-1B online applications. And this is a major contrast to what we've seen last year, which was 758,000 applications, which was crazy. And we know that because those applications had multiple, multiple duplicates. And as a result, this change had to occur. The single lottery entry rule is a very good rule because it helps legitimate applicants 
who really, really need a job and employers who really need these workers to be able to compete fairly for the H-1B visa. So what does this mean for employers and employees who are trying to navigate the system and plan ahead in the next year or so when they're applying for H-1B visas? Number one, look at the hiring, the H-1B process hiring as only one option and open yourself to other visa alternatives like the O-1 visa, specifically in tech, if you're an engineer or a designer or a scientist, if you qualify for the H-1B visa and you've been working for a few years in a particular industry of high demand, you might qualify for the O-1 visa, especially if you're a STEM graduate. So, so make sure that you do not overlook the O-1 visa. It's a great opportunity to try and apply for this visa because there's no cap and you can apply for it at any time if you meet the requirements. So again, make sure that you look at other alternatives to the H-1B visa. If you're Canadian or Mexican, you can apply for the TN visa. If you are from Australia, you can apply for the E3 visa. So there's quite a few options for you outside of the H-1B visa. So remember, explore that and be ready to apply for other options, not just the H-1B. Number two, be proactive in the H-1B visa process. If you're an employer, start recruiting early. Look for applicants in universities, online, whenever you go to networking events. Make sure you start looking for applicants early and broaden your pool. If you're an employee, you should do the same. Apply for jobs early, even during the time that there's no visas. For example, now we are in May, there's no visas available for H-1B, but you can start interviewing, you start doing your internship, you start making connections with employers. So by the time the end of the year comes and they're starting to recruit and file for H-1B visas beginning of 2025, you'll be ready and first in line to apply for the H-1B visa. Number three, stay up to date with the changes in the H-1B visa system. Make sure you follow websites like ours, our YouTube channel to understand on the new changes that are happening because every little change can impact your eligibility and how you apply for this visa. Those applicants that were not aware of the changes in the online application, when the deadline to send your application, when the deadline to register for the H-1B, if you're not informed of these changes, you're not gonna be able to be successful in applying for the H-1B visa. To summarize this, the H-1B visa program is going through major changes. It's, it means that less and less people might be able to get those visas, and therefore it's important to plan early, to look at other alternatives to the H-1B visa, and also discuss with your employer the possibility to start the green card process early because you don't need to have an H-1B visa to start the green card process. You can start the green card process while you're in school. You can start the green card process while you are working for another employer and you can start the green card process while you're still overseas if you found a job remotely. So once again, if you need help with your H-1B process, send me a text 619-483-4549 or go to www.immigrationasap.com, leave your information and one of our team members will contact you ASAP. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.